<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Alright, I've been working on this Class A amplifier. It's rated at 20 watts. Last video I showed it only puts out, well, just less than 8 watts in at 8 ohms. At 4 ohms, it still puts out some decent power. So, I don't think it's current limited, it's voltage limited. We're just clipping the voltage. And I think I understand why I've uh, done a little troubleshooting. I tried to do some reverse engineering. I was going to come up with the schematic. I realized I'm going to have to remove parts. Uh, it's black masking, uh, solder mask on this. Plus there's parts over the traces. The back part I think I can trace well enough even though it's got the solder mask. Uh, it's fairly heavy copper so it's pretty obvious where the copper is. But on the top it goes underneath parts and it's a little more difficult. Tried to use the ohm meter, and I realized I'm just spending too much time. So I've got some other amplifiers to do. But what I want to do on this one, I want to show you what's going on. We're going to come over here and do a quick test. I'm going to show you what's actually happening, and then I want to show you some music on this and show you what it looks like real time. I mean, it's one thing to look at a sine wave; it's another thing to see what it looks like when music is playing through. And then I, we want to listen to it, the speaker behind me, and. Uh, and I want to know what you guys think about this. And if you guys have seen this or any of you have experience with this, I'd like to know what your experience is. Now, this was one of the more expensive amplifier boards I bought. Uh, these two boards cost me close to 100 bucks, 90 some odd dollars and US. And on this one, I've seen the price down around $75. I've seen it kind of move it around. And I think it depends on supply and demand, honestly, with this guy. It's just whatever the price is that month. Now, the reason I spent that money is because I thought it looked like it was quality. Even though I couldn't find a schematic, I couldn't find any information about it, it looked nice. I like this heat sink where all these transistors are kind of set and fixed and spaced correctly, you know, for the design. Has the bias transistor mounted on the heat sink right in the middle so that it's sensing the temperature and floating, you know, adjusting with it. So I like that the bias pot I could see the, the potentiometer right next to the transistor so I knew that was there now one thing I want to say is I know this isn't the heat sink it's come on, it's class A it needs a big heat sink and it does have these big old four mounting bolts and this big thick bar that I showed in the last video so this yes this is meant to mount to a big heat sink which I have in the box I'm I plan to put this in but I think I'm gonna Go back to Class D, and after this video, I think you'll see why. And uh, let me know if you guys have had any experience and better or worse than what I've seen. But just part selection, I bought it because it looked like a good design. And I, I was going to take the time to try to come up with the schematic so we could even do simulations of it, that kind of thing. But I just don't think I want to. For one thing, I don't know that in the end... If I'm going to be able to make the improvements I want. It does have the op amp in front. Which could be a good or bad thing. It's not discreet. So you don't have as many knobs to turn. But again. Being an op amp. There's not as many knobs to turn. It's more. It, you know. Hoping that it was like. Okay good. It's good solid design. And I think it is a, a fair design. Here's the problem. The input circuitry is regulated. That's not the problem. It's just regulated to low voltage. I think it's a good idea to regulate the input circuitry uh, to take the rip off and give a nice solid voltage so there's take the noise out of the power supply from the input circuitry where it might be a little more sensitive maybe. Um, and then on the output, you know, we normally don't regulate that because of efficiency. Even in Class A amps, we don't normally do that. Uh, yeah, it's done sometimes, but you know, I'm, I wasn't expecting to see that, but I, I, I have found the regulators on this. There's a couple of transistors, there's a couple of Zener diodes, and the way that works is the voltage um, goes to the collector of the transistor, and it comes out the emitter. Well, so what you do is you put a Zener diode on the base, and then the emitter follows whatever voltage the base is by a voltage drop of a diode, you know, so... Let's say you put 14.7 volts on the base, you get 14 volts on the emitter. And so 
it's a pre it's a poor man's linear regulator but it works and for an audio amplifier or something like this um, you could put a ton of capacitance on there to try to keep it as smooth as possible or you can do something like that and so I, I kind of like that it's low current on the input I think it works great and uh, in this case it doesn't because the voltages are what kind of what I, and I'll show you they're kind of what I was saying a moment ago so I'm only seeing a peak voltage of close to 10 volts something around there and that's not going to give me anywhere near 20 watts if I could get 12 watts I'd be a lot more happy but below 8 watts it's just not quite enough so after this video you guys can tell me if you agree we're gonna to listen to some music like I say and, and tell me what you think of that all right and I know it's gonna to be tough to hear that over the YouTube but we'll give it a try all right so let's come over here and do those things and then we'll come back and talk and see what you guys think all right so let's do it okay uh, you can see the last video to see more of the setup than that but basically what I've got in this case something new I've got this USB uh, preamp board coming into the input here I've got a scope at the input channel 1 channel 2 I'm looking at the output and also at the output I've got some uh, I've got my power coming in here and the output right here and all the grounds for both the output for the speaker and the plus minus rails coming in here right and then I've got this current probe just in case this makes sig and I've disconnected one of the multimeters because I just had too many things going on, on the ground for right now. What I want to show you is down here there's senior diodes and there's these transistors and they set up these uh, regulators I was talking about and the capacitors of course. So it's a nice little setup and let me just zoom in on that. Alright, so what I want to do is I'm going to bring in the power supply you're going to hear it turn on. And yeah I've still got my jewelry on and stuff but you know all I'm gonna do is use this meter to probe that Zener diode so I can show you the voltage right here and uh, let's see okay I'm gonna bring up the 22 volts then what I want to do is I want to show you and it'll switch over to DC and it's 14.39 volts on that Zener diode okay now let's go all the way up to 31.6 volts. So we got plus plus minus 31.6 instead of 22 now. Okay, now we're at 14.53. So it went up about a tenth of a volt. So that's pretty good regulation, I think, from 22 to 31.6. All right, so what it shows is that it doesn't matter what our voltage rails are over here. Once it comes over here, this regulates the voltage for this input circuit and I think that's where the problem is and now we're gonna go look at the scope okay and let me show you alright so I'm turning up the music now and there you go so this 5 volts per division you see that there and so right there this line you're, you'll see it clipping when it goes past that the yellow is the input so you see that hard clipping on the top? I'll go ahead and freeze one of these pictures. Okay, I just froze that one. I'm going to turn off the power supplies for just a moment so you don't have to listen to that. I'll just spread that out. See that hard clipping? I mean, it's... So you can see it's only just about 11 volts and down here on the negative side it's about 11 12 you know 12 or 13 volts so it's not quite dead center because we didn't have that adjustment but i don't think that's you know that big of a deal it's only one or two volts off point is is it's just clipping way too early now I'll, i'm going to turn it back on again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the input power supply to say plus or minus 15, 17 volts, somewhere around there. Okay, so here, let's do that again. Get the Bluetooth going first. All right, guys, so you can see the input playing, right? I'm going to start bringing up the uh, voltage rails, and you can see them coming up right there. And look how it's flatlining, flatlining and flat lines all the way up because I got the music up so loud 
All right, guys, so, and it's flatlining right there. But my rails are only 17 volts. And see, I'm already hitting that 10 volt peak that I was to Now look, I'm at 20, I'm at 22, I'm all the way up to 31. So once I pass 17, it, now, okay, once I, I, I went all the way down to 15 volts before we saw uh, a change here. Because those regulators are regulating the voltage right around 14 volts. So when I take the voltage rails up above that, I'm not getting any extra voltage at the output. Okay, so I'll take it up one more time. So right there, I'm at 14 and a half, and I'm already maxed out. Whoops, we just ended our music. So there you go. Now I could, of course, bring the music down, volume level, but what I'm saying is 15, 16 volts right there, I'm maxed out. So it doesn't matter how much higher my voltage rails go, I'm already maxed out. All right, guys, so what do you think? Uh, hey, before we go any further, I want to thank my Patreons. I really appreciate all their support, helping me, you know, buy this stuff and all that. And uh, thanks to everybody watching videos. That's awesome. And supporting the channel. It's growing. That's great. Uh, I've got some other amplifiers i got to get going on, some power supplies to build. But what I want to do here is, it's not so much about the power, you know, it's it's dynamic range even. You know, so even if you're not trying to listen to it loud, you, you want to have dynamic range. Depending on the kind of music you have, uh, you might have some music that's quieter most of the time than, than has some maybe classical music, some, some kind of music that uh, is going to have a lot of dynamic range where I, I don't think if you have that ceiling you know that voltage range you can go to that you're just not going to have you know what you want it's not going to sound right uh, here let me turn on these power spikes again and I'm going to turn on this little bluetooth guy okay and we'll hook up to the bluetooth okay then I'm going to bring up the power supply here and this thing's been running pretty warm. So you can see I have this resistor kind of sitting on top of it, kind of soaking some more heat. <laughs> now, here, what I want to do is play some of this YouTube free music. Credits are below, by the way. Now, this is five volts per division still, and I'm gonna to try to maintain my voice volume level so you can kind of compare it. Speaker's just beyond my reach, just barely. Uh, so just no, over an arm's reach away. You can see how small the signal is on the scope, maybe from there, I don't know if you can, but it's just, it's only, you know, plus minus one volt. It's uh, RMS wise, it's 370 millivolts. Okay, so, then when there's some uh, some bigger beats here, it kind of jumps up a little bit. But now if I start increasing the volume here, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the volume to where the peaks are going about five volts. So that's about half my voltage range right there. It's actually six, seven volts probably peaks. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit higher so I can, right to the point where it's starting to clip. It's clipping. So this uh, music is kind of playing low. So, so that's about the level I can play where it's just starting to clip. I mean, it's just before it's starting to clip. So it's, I mean, I'm, it's not that far away from me. It's, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, it's just not that loud. And, you know, it's great for an office or some, you know, music, just a background music. But if you're, you know, if you're a rock and roll guy, want to play some music loud, it's not going to be uh, quite, well, hit the end of the track there. 
So here I'm gonna turn it up where it's it's clipping pretty hard, okay? So that's clipping pretty hard. surprised that it doesn't seem louder than that but I'm gonna turn this down it's uh it's hard to find music too the free music I'm gonna do a little more searching to find some good music to to play or you know uh, but I like to find something that has some good rhythm and then maybe some loud bass notes you know things like that I, I had a couple picked out at one point but Tonight, of course, I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I'll find that and uh, I'll get some tunes so we can have a better, you know, so we can listen to a few different songs. But let me know what you guys think, all right? Right now, I think this is a fail. Uh, without putting some more work into this amp, um, I don't know. It's hard to tell unless it's music that you're familiar with, I think. But what do you guys think? <laughs> Oh, heck. All right. Hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.